Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 4. This is the recap of the episode, and there will be spoilers. So let's get started. All right, if, if you've been watching these now with me, you kind of know how the program works. Anna Chancellor is the first model. There are three celebrity models. She is an actress, and she used to be an artist model, so this is not new to her. She was, um, she greeted all of the contestants, as most of them do. The background is just sort of a bluish, nothing really happening there. And as usual, the artists don't do anything with the background. Anyway, after four hours, the artists turn their easels around, and Anna is going to choose which one of these paintings she gets to take home. It has nothing to do with the final judging, but it is a feather in the artist's cap. Here's the first one up. Wow quite a resemblance to her. I love this kind of painting. It's just, it's kind of, you know, you can't see any of the marks underneath that, you know, so she, so she could find the different points on the face and the skull. So, but the paint is applied with generosity and once again, playing orange against blue is always a really, really good choice to make colors play off each other. So this was a really nice job. And she just went right at it, anchored the shoulders in, nicely done. This is just a fine job. I really, really enjoyed this piece. And, um, and I think Anna did too. I thought this would be her pick, but it will not be her pick to my surprise. The next one up is this one. Next one up was done with a certain amount of felt tip pen. Felt tip pen, wow. That's really interesting to think about. I just never really thought about that as a, a painterly tool, but it certainly is used that way here. Uh, the judges did argue about whether or not this had a real resemblance to her and also referred to those blue spots as gimmicky, but we'll get back to that. Here's the third one, a uh, fine painting. Uh, I, I'm not as excited about this one as I was about the first two. There's something about it that doesn't quite nail it in terms of resemblance, but it certainly is done with uh, confidence and a great knowledge of painting. So it's a nice job. I don't really have a lot to say about it. Um, she uh, pushed color in some ways, enhanced the color inside the eyes, certainly in the hair, and playing against the blue in the background. All right, Anna's pick. Let's see which one Anna picks. This one surprised me and her reason surprised me. She said she picked this one because it went with her house the best. That's kind of an unusual reason, but I guess to some degree that is why we choose the art that we choose. The next one up is a singer and songwriter and pers uh, radio personality. Her name is Beverly Knight, and she would have been a lot of fun to paint. And to my surprise, they put this sort of like aluminum foil stuff behind her. Well, that complicates things considerably. And to my surprise, the painters did deal with it. And so, so that was very interesting. But I love reflective surfaces, so this, this one would have been fun for me. Uh, four hours after the artists begin, they turn their easels around, and we get to see three different interpretations of Beverly. One of them she'll pick to take home. Here's the first one. Um, certainly looks a little, little bit like her, not, not strongly, strongly like her. A uh, nice, nice piece of painting, though. Nice shapes. Nice, I don't know, all I can say about it really is that it's quite pleasant. The proportions on the head are certainly correct. I don't have a problem with this one. Now, we're going to pull back because, remember, the final commission is going to go on a gallery wall, a large gallery wall, so the painter has to be able to uh, have their work read from across the room. I don't find this as strong, and I, I'm not sure why she dealt with the aluminum and the background the same way, leaving the dress white. I, I, I think she ran out of time. Something happened. I'm not sure what. I probably would have thrown some green into that dress. Here's the next one, which is charcoal. Charcoal and also blending with a tool of some kind. So it has a very fleshy kind of look to it. Charcoal is very interesting to me because, because you can't hide behind color with charcoal, right? You have got to get your values right, your darks, mediums, and lights. There's, it's true in color, too, but there's a little bit of 
oh play I think that you can do with color that you just can't get away with with black white and gray she also dealt with that tin foil issue behind it's not a large piece uh, certainly has a resemblance to her and I've had some commenters say that I talk too much about it having a resemblance but portrait artist of the year to me means, means that that is one of the criteria that we're going to consider this one I really really love and I think it you all can see why you know put your thumb up and cover up the highlight in the earring. Yeah, see that the magic is gone without that highlight. If you've done everything else really, really, really correctly, and then you pick your lightest light and let it hit the light, it is just amazing the power. I think that's what got me interested in painting in the first place. Uh, you know, the optical illusion of it. And he did deal with the reflections in the tin foil behind. This one, I think, has the most resemblance to her. And looks like he probably is the most experienced of the painters of the bunch. But I'm not certain about that. There were five um, professionals and the rest were amateurs. I, I didn't keep note of who was who. Uh, Beverly's going to pick one to go home. And let's see which one she picks. Not surprised she picked this one. It's lovely. So nice choice. All right, the next one up is Stephen Graham. He has a character actor. He's known in the States for being on a program called Boardwalk Empire. And he's been on a lot of programs on uh, the BBC. So he's a very familiar face to me. Um, he has a really warm, open, round face. So that's going to be kind of fun. He's the first model we've seen who puts his hand in front of his face, which the artist asked him to do. And these strange clocks behind him, but no one dealt with that at all. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around and we start to get a sneak peek of what might be ahead for us. Looks somewhat promising. This is always probably my the second favorite part of the program. Here's the first one up. Nice job. Really, really enjoy the color palette of this. She's really gone in and made her darkest darks extremely dark, which makes some of those lighter colors pop. Look at that um, for him uh, on the right, the ear. Oh boy, I, I love when someone shows the light coming through an ear with a certain color choice. Oh, from far away, wow, even even more impressive. That's that's really a nice piece. Wow, um, I, 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 I'm excited about this one. I, I, I think she could win. Oh boy, hashtag with Joe is always wrong. She's not gonna win, because I said it. Okay. <laughs> So we go on to the next one. Next one is this one. Um, nice resemblance again. Um, pretty, not nearly as um, exciting a color palette as we had in the last one. And I know in the last one, she didn't do the same kind of blending that's happening here. This person's doing a lot more blending, but in doing the blending, there tends to be more of a neutralization of the color. And that can be really effective when you pull back. You see, I think it's really effective when you pull back. It's not as effective when you're right on top of it and things look a little bit muted, but I, I think she did a really good job. Um, it is interesting. They, they dealt with the clocks in the background by putting black behind him. I think that was probably just really smart. There there's, was really no reason for that, that background. There wasn't something contextual or, or in the storytelling that it needed to be there. Here's the third one. This looks like the most amateur of the one of the paintings, as far as I could tell. Oh, look, he put the clock in. Huh, I'm surprised. Hmm, probably would have benefited from a darker background the way the other artists chose to to do. But, um, but that was not his choice. It's nice to see the variety. There's certainly a great variety in this particular program. So that's a little bit of a close-up. We can see... Um, a little bit more of what the artist style is, and now we're going to pull back. It's certainly not as strong when you pull back. Oh boy, not only that, but I think his, his head's a little out of proportion to his shoulders, some neck, something's a little off there. I'm not sure what it is, but that does not matter. I like to judge whether something just stands alone as a really good painting. This one just doesn't quite do it for me. Stephen is going to pick one to go home. And he picked the one I would have picked. Yeah, nice pick. Now remember, hashtag Joe is always wrong. I thought that this, guy, this person would win the episode, and you already know she doesn't. But I'm glad that uh, 
he chose this one, so she got some recognition. Now time for the semifinal judging. In the semifinal judging, all of the artists are lined up and three of them are pulled out to be semi-finalists and only one of them will go on to the next uh, or the, the what they call the final episode. All right, so let's see. The first one up is a sort of multimedia kind of thing. And like I said, earlier they talked about those blue spots as being gimmicky. I never understand why they say gimmicky. I think they're really effective. And... Uh, but I think he was referring to if she was going to use that over and over and over in her work. And we're going to see some more of her work later, so we can take a remember that for a second. Here's the other one. Uh, boy, it's just a, a really beautiful, beautiful piece of of drawing. And it, you know, even I would even say I know it's not with a brush, but this feels like it was painted. It just it just has that painterly kind of feeling to it for me. I, I kind of veer toward really enjoying pastels, um, although that was charcoal. Now the next one is the one that I just found so exciting with the earring because you have to do you have to make about a million great choices for that earring to re ring and and make that spark. If you don't make the right choices, you could make that mark and it's just not going to read the way that one read. So now we get to see the self-portrait that they did to enter the program where they had all the time in the world and then the work that they did today. Not really a big difference, which is interesting. Um, I don't see a lot of that dot stuff going on that they're concerned about. So this, this, this looks like really fine work to me. I, I kind of enjoy it and I really enjoy that it's done it with a different type of medium than I've ever seen used before. The next one. It's really hard to see his self-portrait. I've seen a lot of self-portraitists will do this. They, they look inside a concave mirror, so you get those weird reflections. It's kind of fun. I've never tried it, but it must be a lot of fun. Uh, the one on the left, as I said, would he would have had lots of time to work on. It's not as large a piece as the one that he did today. He certainly looks like a very competent, good painter, so he'll be in the running. Good for him. So let's see what the third finalist is. Ah, interesting. The third finalist is this very interesting charcoal work. It certainly looks like her. This is exactly what the woman uh, whose self-portrait is here. Boy, she looked exactly like that. So I guess she's very good at nailing a likeness. Good for her. It's Both pieces are really, really nice. I don't know that they'll pick a, a, a charcoal artist as their winner because uh, the final commission is a painting. So I'm not sure what's going to happen about that. Now we get into the final judging. In the final judging, they look at all three of these uh, semifinalists that we just saw, and there they are. They're exhausted, nervous as anything, and only one of them is going to go forward. But they're all deserving. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Earring Lady! Yay! That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing him in the semifinals, the larger semifinals. So this was episode four. That means we have four finalists so far. There usually are, I think, eight, maybe nine. I'm not sure. I haven't looked in this season. So remember, keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please give me a thumbs up. YouTube loves that. And, um, oh, and subscribe if you would be so kind. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.